Medical condition that impacts one in four Americans, yet most people do not even know they have it. Yeah, apparently it's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and our Shirley Chan is joining us here to tell us all about it. I've never even heard of this. Yeah, neither did I, actually, until I was assigned this uh, segment. So mm -hmm. we all know that, you know, when consuming large amounts of alcohol will affect the liver, but there's also a liver problem that may arise in people who drink little to no alcohol, and medical experts are trying to raise awareness. After a regular checkup, two years ago, 55-year-old Chris Givler was not surprised when he was told he had diabetes and hypertension. It was the additional diagnosis that was unexpected. And that's when they came back and said, oh, and also you have uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what that meant. He's not the only one. While one in four people have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, few neither know what it is nor are aware they have it. Considered a silent epidemic, fat builds up in the liver and there are often no symptoms. Fatty liver disease is usually picked up incidentally when you're getting an abdominal ultrasound or your primary care provider is just checking annual labs and notices that your liver tests are elevated. Dr. Sono Kumar is a director of clinical gastroenterology and hepatology at Weill Cornell and is treating Givler. She explains the progression of liver disease. So this is a normal healthy liver. So it's soft and very spongy and, um, and reddish and reddish brown in color. Once you get to cirrhosis, you're at risk for getting a liver cancer. Asymptomatic fatty liver disease is usually discovered too late. It often leads to serious conditions like cirrhosis and is expected to become the number one cause of liver transplants. It's really difficult to get a liver transplant. There are just not enough organ donors. There are not enough organs out there. Hi, Chris. Hey. Good to see you. How are you doing? While there is no specific cause, genetics may play a factor. Hispanic adults have a higher prevalence. It's often found in patients with other complications like obesity and diabetes. Gibbler says when he was diagnosed, he was already more than halfway to the point of cirrhosis. He became rigorous in changing his diet and adding exercise, the standard treatment for fatty liver disease. Exercise, much more portion control. I pay attention to what I eat. Um, and all those things definitely helped me like be much healthier generally. It's just that that didn't really move the needle at all with my liver. A new drug, Resdifra, is considered a game changer in treating fatty liver disease. The drug coupled with lifestyle modifications has helped to slow the progression of the disease and in Givler's case, reverse course. So now the MRI shows that the fat is completely gone from the liver and your liver is starting to heal. So the most important part is that the scar tissue that you had when we started this medication is reversing and you're almost at having a no completely normal, healthy liver. Gibbler feels like he's been given a second chance. I had always been a little uh, leery of going to the doctor in case I got bad news. Well, I got the bad news, but the good news was I could do something about it. Well, like so many medical conditions, exercise and a healthy diet are still the best prevention. And just be aware of how prevalent non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is. And also discuss with your doctor if you feel that you are at higher risk for it. And I, love, I love the last thing that he said. He was afraid of getting bad news mm -hmm. like so many people. Yeah. But the good news is that he got the bad news, but there was something he could do about it. Exactly. Yeah. Now he's raising awareness. Yeah. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Shirley. Mm -hmm.